Hello, Demi Jack here. Now today I am going to teach you all about foods in RimWorld. So first off is we need to know what is a food. Well a food in this game is considered kind of like a drug as if you have a look at this colonist right here. As you probably know drugs are a need. I don't think they show up in the need section. It's in the um, health section drugs are. But as you can see there is a need called food and Basically, it's a, now it says food is an amount of nutrition a creature has consumed recently. If it is zero, a creature will become increasingly malnourished and eventually die. So, w what does all that mean? Essentially, what that all means is they need to be fed, and as the feed goes down, when it's bar is maxed out, they're considered fed. When it's empty, they're not considered fed malnutrition. Essentially, what it means is that if you don't feed your colonists for a little while, they get a malnutrition buff. Let's see, do I have a malnutrition buff? No, I don't. Let's see if any of my colonists do. Um, no, none of them do. Starts at 100%. If you feed them, it goes down over time to zero, but eventually it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. It starts at low and then gets higher and higher and higher and higher. And if you don't feed them too long, they will eventually even consider eating a corpse because they're dead, dead hungry. Now generally, co colonists won't eat the corpse, but the hungrier they get, the more they'll eat the corpse. And the more they want to because they need food. Heck, I'm pretty sure they'll even consider eating this human meat if they're not a cannibal, if they need being fed, because they, they get so hungry, they need food, and it gets so bad where they may even eat. Say this boy here is a, is a corpse, it's not a corpse, let's just say it's a corpse. Well then, the colonists would want to eat it, because it's the only thing they can see for food, so I'm going to eat that corpse, bro. That's not nutrition, and if you don't get rid of it eventually, they will of course die from starvation, or as the game treats it, malnutrition. Let's get over buffs first. I want to consider, because some foods do give buffs. Actually, most foods either give negative buffs or positive buffs, except for simple meal. Let's see, does, um, does package survival meal give buff? Because I actually want to know this. Alright, so I'm going to tell him to eat the package survival meal. He's actually eaten a lot lately, so yeah. Okay, so it doesn't actually give a buff. Alright, so the buffs that there are, this guy's got like basically all of them, particularly from meal. There's also buffs from raw food, but we'll get into that. Buffs from meal are 8 lavish meal, 8 fine meal, 8 awful meal, and of course, 8 kibble. Now, the 8 lavish meal comes from these, this one here, where I've clicked on lavish meals. Eight fine meals comes from fine meals, and of course, eight kibble comes from kibble. I'm including kibble in this guide, but only for colonists, not animals, because they can eat it, so I think I should include it, so you know not to feed them kibble. Let's go over all the needs. Okay, so eight lavish meal is the 12 green buff. Green buff means it's good. Red plus the negative sign means it's bad. It says here, that lavish meal was amazing. It nourished my body and soul. Plus is a day. And there's also fine meal, which... I ate a really tasty fine meal. Yum. Now fine meal expires in 24 hours. These green moonlets last a day. Now of course there is also the simple meal which doesn't give a buff. And the package survival meal which lasts forever. Also there's pemmican. It essentially lasts a long time. See it boils in one year. And there's kibble which never deteriorates like the package survival meal. But they hate eating it because see if we go here. Kibble. I had to eat animal kibble. It's like I don't get to be human anymore. So, as you can see, they all give different buffs. Simple meals don't, and neither do packaged survival meals. But packaged survival meals are good for caravan journeys, as simple meals are just good on the colony at the home. And then there's the lavish meals and the fine meals, which, to be honest, they're later game stuff. You don't want to be making them straight away. However, simple meals cost 10 meat or fruit, depending on what you want to cook it from as... It doesn't say this because it will spawn in, but it would say what it's from. Fine meals and lavish meal are 50 meat, 50 fruit or veg. And of course, package survival meals are just package survival meals. They're basically for caravan trips, so that's really all they're for. Also, you do start with package survival meals in Crash Landed. Now, pemmican is 50 meat, 50 veg, and it lasts a really long time, as well as it's good for the winter. 
and kibble, it's 50 meat, 50 veg, but it's not really suitable for the colonists. You want to feed it to your animals like this raccoon here. I, I think that's the meals. Now, how do I make these meals? Well, to make these meals, you're going to need a fridge. This fridge is probably not how you want to build your fridges, as you probably actually want to build it something like... probably want to build it something like this. See, I've got the blueprint. As you want an airlock, you really, really want an airlock. I, I built this quick and I forgot to do the airlock, so that's my bad. But you're gonna have the airlock on your fridge. Most things here are frozen. Actually, everything here is frozen and it won't spoil. Now, to make a fridge, you need a cooler. You also need an air vent to let the heat out. As you know, this red side is the heat, this green side is cool. So you want to get that heat out, as well as you need a power grid. This here is probably not the best laid out power grid, but it works right now. However, your power grid is going to be better. See, right now I've got solar and generator and wind turbines. And I've got a battery room here, but your your power generator is going to be better than this. This is just makeshift. Now, there is a lot of different kinds of raw foods that you can use to make your meals. So you want to make these meals, okay? But you need the raw food to make them. Now, where do I get raw food? Well, First step is to have a growing zone. This here is a growing zone. There's nothing planted here as it hasn't been prepared for planting. There's a lot of plants you can grow. However, we're not focusing on all of them as a lot of them aren't food. Like cotton plant, not food. Hop, not food. Psycho plant, not food. Smoked leaf, not food. Some of them are drug related. Some of them are clothing related, like the cotton. Some of them are for animals like hay grass. Yes, hay grass is considered a food, but it's food for animals. Now there is four different types of crops. Now you have, of course, your rice, which, mind you, if we get on the eye, takes three days to grow as it's a very high maintenance plant as it requires a lot of planting because you're going to be harvesting this plant a lot and replanting it a lot. But it gives the least amount of food, but it grows really, really quick and I recommend it for your early game. There is also strawberry plants. Now I've never used strawberry plants but they take 4.6 days to grow. Now a little bit not maintenance as the rice. It's essentially a burial bush from what what I know. I, d I don't know if you have to keep harvesting it or keep growing it or what. I, I don't know about that. I, I've never used strawberry plant. I, I personally don't recommend using strawberry plants and I don't think many people actually use strawberry plants. Then of course there is the potato which is like your medium maintenance one as it's like takes 5.8 days to grow. Now, now th th this is just average as it depends on the soil that you use by the way. Now it, it's medium as it gives more than the rice but it gives not as much as corn which we will get into now. Now corn is low maintenance. I personally recommend every colony end up growing corn. Now it takes 11 days to grow but gives the most yield of crops. So this, this is basically the end goal crop. Now it takes 11 days, point three and it gives the most crops out of all of them. You can also get meat as, let's face facts, you can hunt for your food also. Like this turkey here. You can hunt this turkey which you have to click on and click hunt and it will mark it to be hunt and if your colonist has a gun or a bow, personally I recommend like a hunting rifle or a bow to hunt your animals as to be honest, hunting with like an Alice, like an AK-47 or a submachine gun or whatever modded weapon you got, like a laser gun or whatever, is probably not recommended. Hunting rifles are actually okay to shoot animals as a gun, but I wouldn't go anything else but a hunting rifle or a bow. When you click hunt, they'll automatically hunt it, or you can just click on this guy for example, click draft. He doesn't have a gun, but let's say he has a gun. And then you go up to turkey, left click and you can click shoot. Now there's only melee attack but there would also be shoot under here. So you would click that. And that's personally how I hunt my animals and then I undraft them and then click OK on the dead animal and then make them haul it back. As they're really really horrible auto hunting to be honest. Now there are a lot of different animals you can hunt like these boars and of course let's see this is actually easy to find animals. And also, every animal has a revenge chance. Timberwolf here has a 2.5 revenge chance if we go to the wildlife section, as these boars have a 0.5. So, 
Basically, it means that they're going to attack your left, and being closer to the animal gives them even higher chances of revenge chance. And even sometimes the whole herd can turn on you. So you got to be careful hunting, okay? Many of my colonies have ended because hordes of boars have gone ravenous and have decided to destroy everything. Okay, so once I've got the animal killed, what do I do with it? How do I get the meat stored in it? Well, you need either a, as you see here, I've got a butching table or a butcher spot. Both of these are, are good, however the butching table is better than the butching spot as the butcher table is like a better version of the butching spot. Now the butching spot of course is free but it has some negative negatives with it as of course it is not very good at butchering as you'll actually waste meat and leather as the butchering table, if we go to architect, costs 95 wood to make but you don't waste as much meat, in fact I don't think you actually waste meat at all and also the butchering spot of course is very very dirty, it's a very very dirty item as if we click here, very dirty, it's, it's currently a 3.92 but that's because there's a butchering table and a butchering spot in the same room but if I get rid of the butchering spot Okay, it's still dirty, but it's because there's some blood on the floor. Yeah, blood actually happens if you don't clean the blood up. So yeah, it needs the blood cleaning up, but it's still very, very dirty. It, it's still very, very dirty. And it's probably best that you get a chair or a stool with your butchering spot, as that also helps. It, it also helps. Now, last thing on how to get raw food, as you may notice, I do have milk. And to get milk, you need an animal, presumably one that gives milk, like a muffalo, or a yak, or a cow. Something that gives milk. Now, it will have a milk fullness, and when that fullness is up, you can milk it and get the milk. And of course, there are also wild crops that you can harvest, like these berry bushes here. You can actually har harvest them by clicking the harvest button. Depending on how much it's grown, is how much of the berries you get. Now, I want to go with nutrition, and you might be wondering, oh, but damage you didn't go into the nutrition of the food. Well, I, I had that planned for the later part, but before we start, I just want to say, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel, as I am starting to make RimWorld guides, and I want to make good quality RimWorld guides. It, it, it may take some time to make actual good quality RimWorld guides, but consider subscribing, as well as liking the video, if you found it good, and... Also following me on my Twitter account and my Twitch account, which you can find in the links below. Now back to the video. Now, nutrition. Of course, this is very, very important as the nutrition rate actually determines how much you get filled to, to, to the fed level. Now, we're going to start with raw food and then make our way to the meals. Now, the raw foods. There's different kinds of raw foods like meat and you know insect meat and all the stuff also we're going to go with the buffs, debuffs from, from some of the raw food as this is going to be included also in this bit now there is of course human meat they get a negative moonlit from eating human meat if we have a look if she goes eats it she should get raw cannibalism and As you can see, raw cannibalism. Now, it, there's also moodlets for eating raw food, if we eat this corn. Raw cannibalism is of 20 minus, and as it says, I had to eat meat of another human, raw like an animal. This is a nightmare, it lasts a day, it lasts a day. They all last a day. Now, there is, of course, eight raw food. I had to eat raw food, we should be cooking this kind of food before eating it. We're not animals. And last but not least, there is insect meat. Which insect meat, it, it, it's, it's bad, but it's not as bad as human meat. I just want to give that as a spoiler. Now if we go here. Now. There should be one saying, eight insect meat. Here you go, eight insect meat. I had to eat some grey slime insect meat. It was probably the worst, most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. Now getting into nutrition, as you may have noticed, my colonists there did get food poisoning. Yes, raw food can give you food poisoning, 
as you can see, is a food poisoning initial. This is actually good that this happened then. I want to cover this in the nutrition part. Now, raw food does give it. It's basically a 20 plus pain, 60 times consciousness, 8 times movement, 90 times manipulation, 95 blood filtration, and 90 times eating. So it, it's bad. She's getting... She's gonna eat a lot slower from now on till she recovers. Now basically it will go up to major and then once that's happened, go into recovering and they will recover and they will get better and the food poisoning will go. But till then you're stuck with it and they may vomit also. They may actually vomit also. So you gotta be careful that as they can, for example, if I go to here and I go, I'm not gonna actually have a build it, but, but say I'm building this wall here for some reason. Well, she comes up, she may actually vomit on the ground, and at least makes the room not that good when they see vomit, as I wouldn't like to see vomit, and I'm pretty sure you wouldn't like to see vomit. Now, the nutritional value of the food, as we did get hold up by that food poisoning, but that's actually good that that happened, because I needed it to happen, and I was hoping it would happen sometime in the video, actually. Now, the nutrition. Now, all food has a 0.05 nutrition value. Basically, it's not, now, what that means is it's not going to fill you up much, as cooked. We will get into cooked food soon. I just want to work on the taste of these foods. Now insect jelly and berries are at the top of the taste. So as you see, berries and insect jelly. Yes, I don't mean royal insect jelly. That is a whole different thing. I mean insect jelly. It's a food. This is a food. Berries are food. Insect jelly is food. They have a really, really good taste. They really like the taste. And if they go into here, they'll see all this stuff, and you say they're really, really hungry. They'll probably go for the instant jelly of the berries. They'll probably go for this berry right here, actually. So, yeah, they like the berries and the insect jelly. Berry actually has the best taste at all, followed by insect jelly. Actually, I think they might be the same, actually. And then, of course, you have the fruits and meat, milk. Milk's probably higher than that, though. And then, of course, Human meat and insect meat. I think human meat, human meat is like the worst, and in insect meat is pretty bad also. Berries don't give food poisoning, so if she probably ate that berry, she probably wouldn't have got food poisoning then, as berries don't give that stuff. As it's, it's just berries, it's just berries. Let's get nutrition of food. As now the, the simple meal is 90 nutrition, and of course the package meal is 90, and. Lavish meal is one, it's actually 1.0, and fine meal is 1.90 also, so these, these are all the same. However, pemmican actually is really, really bad. It's 0 0.5, and they eat a lot of it, and they get a lot for making it, but they eat a lot of it. As it is good for winter, as you don't have to rely on crops during winter. And of course, there is kibble, which also has a nutrition of 0 0.05. I don't recommend eating it, we've been over that. So, that is nutrition now. Okay, so now, of course, you need somewhere to cook your food. Now, there is a couple of stuff. There is a campfire, I haven't built my campfire, but if you have a look, it takes full work to build, and it takes 20 wood to build, and of course, it gives off a source of light. It won't actually give a source of light in here, as these walls are blocking the source of light. However, it does project over there, so if these walls weren't actually here, the source of light would get in. Presumably, these lights here, it would get in if these walls weren't here. Now, I don't have one built, but I do have that. And, of course, there is the field stove, which, if we go into Architect, takes about... You can find a production. Takes 80 steel to build. Looks like that you actually need a share for it. It's actually recommended that you get a share for it. And then there is the electric stove, which requires electricity. Which is 80 steel and two components. So not as bad as the fuel stove. It's actually better than the fuel stove. I actually recommend getting a electric stove at some point. Like, personally, for what I would do is start with the campfire, then get the fuel stove. And if I, unless I have electricity research and batteries, then I would just skip straight to electric stove. But if I don't have that research because I'm playing tribal, I would personally go field then electric. You need to do a bill. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of bills listed here, but let's just go to this one. It's got no bills. Okay, simple meal. It requires no cooking skill to make. You can also do the same one, but times four. Now, fine cooking, we don't have a chef in this. This is actually good that we don't, because I can show you the cooking requirement for it. It requires a six cooking skill. So it's a little bit more advanced than the simple meal. And of course, there is, of course, 
the lavish meal, which is an aid in cooking. We don't have anyone in an aid, of course, because we couldn't cook the final meal. And you need an eight to cook it. So you need skilled cooks to cook these two, not so to cook the simple meal. Simple meal is for everyone. So you need a technology for pemmicans. That's actually locked behind a technology as there is the electric stove. There's also, as you may have known, another type of food. We don't have any, but it's locked behind a technology. The cocoa technology that gives essentially chocolate and chocolate is a recreation need. Now, I, I've i heard that it takes a long time to grow the cocoa trees if you need to get tree sowing, then cocos, and then you've got to plant the cocos, then you've got to wait for the trees to grow, and then the cocos to grow, and it, it's, it's just time consuming. So, I, if you want to do it, do it. That, that's all fine, but it's really time consuming to get that chocolate. Okay, so there is one thing we haven't touched over. It's the nutrient paste dispenser. It is a great technology, and I'm covering this for last, as this is the last thing in the guide. Now, the nutrient paste dispenser, it, it requires technology to research, to build it, which is right here, 400 points, now, electricity and nutrient paste, and electricity is actually a really good technology, as it gives electricity and you get the nutrient paste. Next, if you research it, if you're playing tribal, if you're not, you already have it researched. and. You build these hoppers around this nutrient paste. Potentially a nutrient paste would look something like this. Maybe a little bit better. Maybe make this an air conditioning place. I, I didn't do that. And then when someone goes up, they go up here where the circle is, get the nutrient paste. I don't have anyone that's hungry at the moment. Now I've got this person here. I can't click on it automatically. That's a thing with nutrient paste. But they will go up to it when they use it, especially if there's no other food for them to get. Colonies can actually survive on nutrient paste. Now, it does give a negative debuff if we go here. Eight awful meal. I had to eat a disgusting, tasteless meal. I know it keeps you alive, but nobody wants to swallow that cup. So, yeah, he did eat from the nutrient paste dispenser. I think when I tried recording this video before, he did eat from it. So, it is a very good technology, but that form debuff is the side effect from it. As it requires six food to get one nutrient paste food, and then you get this debuff and it it's not that good but the nutrient paste it, it's actually worth the debuff it's actually worth it it's actually worth it so we're going to pause the game again and nutrient paste is a lifesaver colonies can actually run on nutrient paste once you get nutrient paste no more cooks no more food poisoning because you can get food poisoning from cooks which i didn't mention but i want to save that for then and so it, it's like a war item and then at the back you've got like the food and the hopper and as you can see, some food has actually been used. It's a little stack of 75 beef, but it comes out nutrient paste. There is a hack to it. I can't show you like fully, but you would what you would do, you get someone going up getting it, you would draft them like this, then undraft, they drop it, go get it, and then you would draft them again, and they would get it again. So that is essentially everything I know about cooking. There's probably stuff I missed. There's probably stuff I missed. If I did miss anything, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.